another online tool that is useful in the classroom use is Google Groups. Google Groups is a place where a bunch of people can get together and have common discussions about things, but I've used it as a place to write essays and discuss topics um, that are, are related to the content in the classroom. This is another one of those tools that's going to require you to have a Google account. Again, your Google account is free and it's useful to have. Once you have that Google account created, you're going to find Google Groups by going over to the More function, uh, which is on the left-hand side of the top, and it often will be listed among the top five tools. If it's not there, you're going to go all the way down to where it says Even More. The Even More page is a really useful page to visit every once in a while because as they add new tools, this is where it's going to be listed. And if you see new things, you might want to give it a try. But for now, we're just going to go to Groups. You're going to have Find Groups. It's going to be on the right-hand side in the, under Communication, Show, and Share. And click on Groups. This is the page in Groups, but you're only going to see one time. You're going to see it when you first make your first group. After you make your first group, it's going to look a little bit different because it's going to list the group that you've created here. But you're going to start here, and you're going to say Create a Group. In this next screen, you're going to go ahead and start your new group. Go ahead and give it a name that you want. As you're giving it a name, it's going to fill in a web address that's going to be linked to your group. You can change that web address if you'd like to, otherwise it'll just be the same as the title of your page. Move down, give, describe your page, and then give it the settings that you want to use for your page. These are some things that can be changed later as well, but set it up now the way that you'd like it to prevent you from having to change it later. The next screen is something you're all familiar with. This is the little system that you, they use to make sure that Computers aren't set up to create these groups on their own automated pages, which then restricts for other people to use it. So go ahead and type in the word as you see it here so that you can authorize that you are in fact a human being. On this screen, this is where you're going to start adding members to your group. Go ahead and just put in email addresses of the people that you want to be participating in the group. Give them a little greeting to introduce them to the group. You don't have to add everybody. You don't even have to add anybody at this point. But this is the way you're going to start off by getting people to join your group. You can add members later, and you can delete people later as well. This screen here is just giving you a lowdown of all the data about your group. And once you're going to look over that and see that it's right on, say go ahead and proceed to your group. The next screen here is your home page of your Google Groups account. This is the six main areas of your Google Groups. It'll be the members, um, who you've assigned memberships and what role they have. If you want to see them all, just click on Select All. Next is going to be different discussions that you've started. Again, you're not going to see them all, and you shouldn't have any at this point. But when you have more, you can click View All to see all of the discussions that you have started. Next is going to be Invite or Add Members, where you can select members to, to join your group. Then there's going to be Pages, which are different. Um, um, it's a word processing option for Google Groups where you can type up um, pages, then upload some files. So if you've got files that you uh, have on your desktop or your laptop, you can transfer them to here and have them accessible to members. And then finally is to tune your group settings. This is where you can uh, adjust settings for your Google Groups account. Once you say new post or add new post in a discussions thread, this is the screen that's going to come up here. You're just going to give it a subject line, which will be the title of the discussion, and then enter in the text that's going to launch the discussion. Uh, what is the instructions for the discussion? What is the topic of the discussion? Whatever it is that you want to put here that's going to start the um, topic. If you say add a page, this is that word processing function that I mentioned just a minute ago. This is the screen that's going to come up. And again, it's going to look very similar to other tools that you've used. It is what's somewhat like a word processing tool. And you can go ahead and type that up and use these functions to add instructions. If you're going to start a discussion that has requires greater detail as far as instructions that you want people to follow, this is the tool that you might want to use. Once you finish this, it's going to go into the discussions and it's going to be listed as one of the new topics or discussion threads. Once you finish typing up your stuff in your uh, pages portion of the Google Groups, you're going to say Save and Publish. And this is the screen that's going to come up here. It's going to give you a web address that this document's going to be saved as. You don't need to worry about that because it's going to be also linked into your Google Groups account. 
but you have an option. Um, you can op you can post message, and what that's going to do is it's going to post it as a discussion thread, or you can skip it, and it's just going to save it in your pages tab. From your home screen, you can choose to upload files. This is the portion of Google Groups where you can attach files that you've saved on your computer and you can link them to this Google Groups. Um, it doesn't uh, really link them from your computer to this. What it will do is it will upload that file into Google and then people that are part of this group will have access to those same files. Uh, to do this, you're just going to select choose file, find your file, and then you're going to go ahead and upload it. Um, they will then be listed on your Google Groups account in here. From the home screen, the last link that we haven't hit on yet is the Tune Your Group Settings, and this is what it's going to look like once you click on that. There are seven tabs in this, and we're going to really quickly go through all seven of them. The first is General. General is just giving you the details um, that you saw at the end of the section when you created the Google Group. That last screen showed you the same information as far as what the current web address and the email address is for your, your Google Group. That's what General is. Um, you can make a few little changes in here. Um, but you're probably not going to worry about this section very much. The Access tab is very, very important. You're going to want to go through this very slowly and carefully for each little section, and you're just going to toggle the choice that you want to make for each of the choices down here. Um, this is going to control who gets to do what on your Google Group account. Um, so go through this carefully, choose the way you'd like it set up, and um, you can, again, you can change this later if you need to. But read through this to determine who has access to your Google Group and who can do what. Appearance is how does it look. Um, you can change the, the icon that appears for your Google group and you can choose change the layout um, as well as far as the colors and the style that it appears. Um, so once you're fam familiar and comfortable with Google groups get in here and customize it to your heart's content. Navigation. Um, in the very beginning on your home page there's these five main areas. Um, also on the right hand column of, of the uh, screen here. Um, it, this is just deciding what order those should appear on your page or whether they should appear at all. So choose them as you wish as well. Under email delivery, this is just going to determine the settings for how information will be sent into email accounts. Um, again, read through this and choose it the way that you would like it set up for your Google group. Categories is basically choosing what category does this best fit as far as all the groups that are out there where does your group fit um, for this one I have chosen schools universities primary schools schools and universities secondary schools even though it's really primarily set for secondary schools some of these tools do work for primary schools as well particularly may maybe middle schools advanced has some more specific and, and again advanced settings that you're going to want to read through read through them carefully um, choose them as you see fit um, once you're done with the group, this you can come in here and you can delete the group in this function as well. So read through them, select them as they best fit your needs, um, or you can just leave them at the default settings. Earlier, we showed the list of memberships, and you can set who has what membership rights. If you choose management, the people that you choose as ma managers can get into the management tasks ones. And so it's important that you choose your managers appropriately, because once they get in here, they're going to have um, access to direct their other members direct email accounts and other information and, and they can delete people and, and add people so get into the management task link and kind of tad through the different uh, functions in here basically what it is is just choosing who has different man management or membership abilities who has not accepted membership yet who has accepted membership what type of membership they have what messages haven't been posted yet if you choose to have messages previewed by you before they're posted, they're going to show up in here under um, review pending messages. If, a, if you set up where anybody can join, but you get to choose who gets to join or not, they have to ask you first. That would be under review pending members. And you can go through there and you can either authorize or not authorize. Or you can go into the management manage members where you can kind of choose and, and, and delete or unsubscribe or um, check to see who has joined or not. So this is where when you set up the account and, and who has access and, and what type of site you have, this is where you're going to control it after it's been set up.